Hello, welcome to another episode of Stories of World War II Veterans. My name is Kayleen Reeser, and each week I will read you a story from one of the books that I have written in my World War II Legacies series, and these are based on interviews I did with World War II vets, 260 of them. And of course, most of them are gone at this point, so we're very sad about that, but their stories can live on through my books. And this is another Navy story, and I don't know if you've been following my uh, stories that I have been reading. There are a lot of Navy stories in this book in particular, so you may want to think about that book if you are deciding to purchase one, or all of them. This is about Francis Lee Bushong, who served in the Navy. On December 13, 1944, while patrolling the Philippines, the USS Nashville was attacked by a kamikaze. When the Japanese plane hit the Nashville midship, it exploded, killing 143 American sailors and injuring nearly 200 others. Francis Lee Bushong had been at the stern, or back of the ship, during the attack. He was not injured. The day before, I had stood where the torpedo hit, he said. If that kamikaze had hit one day earlier, the explosion would have killed me. Despite being heavily damaged, the Nashville provided anti-aircraft fire before reaching an Allied port for repairs. Launched in 1937, the USS Nashville became famous when, in April 1942, it escorted the USS Hornet toward Japan. The Hornet was part of the dangerous but successful Doolittle do Raid on Tokyo, carrying 16 B-25 bombers on its flight deck. In August of 1942, the crew of the Nashville again entered battle during the attack of Japanese forces in the Aleutian Islands. In August of 1943, 23-year-old Bushong wondered if the ship's luck would continue as he and the crew sailed from San Francisco toward Pearl Harbor. As he watched the Golden Gate Bridge's tall orange towers fade from view, he was full of doubts. I didn't know if I could kill the enemy when it was time for it, he said. I also didn't know if I would return home. Several months later, in April 1944, the Nashville's crew bombarded the beach of Wake Island, providing fire support against the Japanese military. During general quarters, when the crew was at battle stations, Bushong was assigned to the covered main battery. As he helped load shells into the ship's anti-aircraft guns, any doubts about his ability to support his crew members disappeared especially after a kamikaze attack in December. Bushong never forgot his near miss from death that day. I believed my survival was a sign that God wanted me to do something meaningful with my life after the war, he said. I was certain from that point that I would survive. General Douglas MacArthur chose to sail on the Nashville throughout the Pacific. One trip was particularly memorable. In March of 1942, MacArthur had obeyed orders from President Roosevelt to withdraw from the Philippines when Japanese military threatened to overrun the area of Bataan. For two years, MacArthur stayed in Australia with his family until in October 1944, when MacArthur returned to the Philippines. The tide had seemed to turn in favor of the Allies. MacArthur liked our ship and was a good strategist, said Bouchon. He knew which islands to go to and which to skip. He took charge until Truman ordered us home. On more than one occasion, the Nashville's crew defended the Australians against the Japanese. The Australians only had two ships, said Bouchon. They were thankful for our help. As a result, the Nashville crew developed camaraderie with the Australian sailors. When we were not at general quarters, we had fun together. The Aussies liked to dive out of their ship's portholes and swim, he said. The Australians even offered the Americans some of their country's beer. I never drank much, but sipped their brew, he said it was good. 
In August of 1945, the war ended with Japan's surrender, which became official the following month. Bouchong, lacking points to be discharged, was sent to the Huangpu River area in China to help with the country's cleanup. Since the 1930s, the Chinese people had endured severe persecution from the Japanese. Nothing was pretty there, said Bouchong. By the time he was discharged, Lieutenant Bouchong had participated in 13 landings. Back in Indiana, Bouchong chose a career he felt would give back to his community. He became a teacher. He taught in Kendallville and Central High School, Anthus Career Center, and Indiana Purdue in Fort Wayne before retiring in 1985. Bouchong and his wife, Betty Jane, became parents to two children. What I saw in the war was hard to talk about for a long time, he said, but fighting as a soldier taught me that we should be happy for every day. I've spent my life after the war trying to do that. I'd go back and fight for our country today if I could. Here's a picture, a wedding picture actually, of Francis Bouchon and his wife. And again, his story is taken from my third book in the World War II Legacy Series, We Gave Our Best, American World War II Veterans Tell Their Stories. So I hope you enjoyed today's story. Please go to the button to subscribe and do so. Uh, ring the bell, leave a comment, tell another person about these stories and ask them to subscribe. You can find my books on Amazon. And most of all, be sure to thank a veteran for his or her service. Thanks. See you next week.